back with your week 12 recap. Hopefully everyone's having a great week. Uh, happy Friday, Ksenia. How are you? Happy Friday. Uh, I'm so happy that it's the end of the week, to be honest, and that weekend is coming. Yeah, but doing great. And what's about you, Rick? Well, I think it's awesome. You're rocking dark mode on the outfit. You know, <laughs> she's always wearing something bright. Uh, uh, it's always dark uh, in the winter for her, so uh, she's trying to switch it up. Uh, I'm doing great, but I tell you what, oh, myself and everyone at Veeam, we're working so hard to prepare for V11. So uh, make yeah. sure we put in the notes that we're going to, uh, I think it's right about a month away, less than a month, actually. The, yeah, 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 one month. Event. Yeah, the go.veeam.com forward slash V11, prepping up some demos and the, the big long story. We've been working so hard for the V11 release. And internally, we went to release candidates, so we're out of beta. So it's coming. Here it is. It's <laughs> It's real. So uh, yeah. did we have a busy week in the community? What what was going on there? Of course, of course. We had, and happy to share. So, you know, first, Jorge is back. Our content machine is back, and I'm so happy to see new valuable content from him. So this one is about uh, changes in uh, new API calls, improvements, and other changes which were done in our cloud products. Vim Backup for AWS version 3, and also Vim Backup for Microsoft Office 365 version 5 and Jorge it, it really put it easy and in a simple way so what you have to do just to check it out because you can see all the changes and what's new in the screenshots attached to each product here wow man he is a machine api stuff if you know if you haven't gotten into it this is really an important part of the the future and jorge is indeed a machine you you really shouldn't say he's back because he's never left he's just back in the top three <laughs> so um jorge you know great job and and i like the shout out to chris arsenault uh chris is one of those architects that specializes in some of this automation stuff uh, expertise as well so you know one thing i'll highlight is that a lot of the new products, AWS Backup, Office 365 Backup, Azure Backup, they are really taking these APIs different than the other products, right? So uh, great to have a resource here by Jorge to highlight how to use it and what's new. Good stuff. Yeah, okay. So I think we're ready for the next blog post. And this one is really special. It, 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 you know, it's something that you don't usually see at our community, and I love that because uh, Michael Paul, he's sharing the Veeam support, you know, position, I would say, with a new uh, product version releases. And, you know, what is the life cycle and what you can expect from us, from Veeam? So he's putting it in really simple words and then kind of instruction. And it's really right in time because, you know, V11 is coming. We're doing our launch event and, of course, uh, upgrade. I mean, almost everyone, you would need to upgrade to V11, right? So it's it's something that's common. Yeah, and if I look at this, I do think it's good, good that uh, Miko Paul has outlined it. And I really like the KB1530. In fact, I was uh, hoping that he had a link to that. <laughs> you know, the official answer of what we support is outlined here. But, you know, the reality is that we at Veeam, due to the way that the platforms move, we have to keep this moving, right? Um, I, I'm not a fan of set it and forget it, right? Uh, we've all had those mm -hmm. products that you implement and just walk away from. Well, you know, you can run Veeam for a long time, but the moment you change your hypervisor or your OS or your apps or some of the different cloud capabilities, right? It's just, it's in everyone's best interest to work on upgrades. And the one thing I'll highlight is that if you are an active customer on support or a subscription license, you're entitled to product upgrades for free. So uh, mm -hmm, definitely mm -hmm. uh, the universal license, all that stuff just aligns to making it easy. And, and trust me, upgrading Veeam is not going to be a difficult thing. So yeah, great, yeah. great post here, Miko. Yeah, and join discussions here. So basically, Rick, everything what you just mentioned about, you know, uh, changing OS and uh, you know, all the requirements and why we are doing that. So just join, you know, this conversation. And uh, I don't know, I believe that it's really good instruction and reminder what to do and how to act when you release is happening. OK, yep. so any guesses what's in the third tab? Well, here? it's got a, it's got an emoji <laughs> in the title. So if I if who uses emojis almost all the time in the title, it's probably yeah. Esteban. Okay, okay. Yep. <laughs> Here Double we go. emoji. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and of course some new maps, you know. So he came back. <laughs> so it's good to hear him uh, to see him back. And uh, you know, Esteban is delivering some short articles about um, Linux improvements, about some features, you know, new features in V11. And this is one of these posts. So this one is dedicated to improvements for Linux agents. A really short list of uh, capabilities with a screenshot attached. And I like it because, you know, straight to the point, like, okay, that what was changed, pay attention to that. And now, you know, you know what's coming, what to expect. Yeah, so this is actually really important. Um, Esteban's hitting on something that if you're using a lot of the agents, I sometimes am not good about this, but having that recovery media or the ISO made for the agents is actually really important. Now, I'll share you a practice I've done at home. Every computer at home is backed up with the Veeam agent. I think I have, I counted last night, like eight different emails I get of all of those mm. being successful. I only have two different types of hardware, so I actually can share that media between the, the two models, okay? So that's kind of a, a little bit of a cheat instead of having media or ISOs created for each. But knowing that this is available, this is very, very handy when you need it. So uh, shout out to Esteban, Great look here for going into the recovery ISO for the Linux agent. Same for Windows, right? You always want to make sure you have a copy of that ready uh, so that if you needed to do a bare metal recovery, it's going to be very easy for you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as usual, we have, you know, the rest of the blog post. Uh, you may find them in related topics. So if you'd like to know about more Linux improvements in upcoming V11 version, so just jump to this blog post and learn it. Okay. What a week! And there's, uh, you know, it's good. There's going to be more. We're not stopping. So thank you everyone for sharing here. And um, Ksenia, make sure you put a link to the V11 launch event in the community absolutely. post here. Yeah. So uh, last week of February, uh, we're going to have demos of uh, three key capabilities. Danny and Anton are going to be on. They're going to be talking so about. So it's now sneak peek for our community, you know, because we never mentioned it anywhere. <laughs> That's true. We've uh, we've tried to like hold back a little bit. Uh, in fact, today, LinkedIn Live, Mel uh, Melissa and I are going to talk about some tips on how to prepare for the upgrade, but not talk about the upgrade. It's a, you know, kind of yeah. a cheeky little move. But <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. So thanks, everyone, for, for yeah. watching. Yeah, thanks for watching and see you in community.